everyone! Welcome to another episode of Biohacking Beauty. My name is Amitai Eshel. I am the co-founder and CEO of Young Goose, the biohacking skincare company, a company that this uh, podcast is brought to you by. I'm very grateful for everyone who is joining us today. Today is a solo episode in which we're going to be talking about our hyperbaric mass. It launched, it really has become like a cult product for some people. And recently we have had a microbiologist really digging deep into the science, you know, asking us why is it called hyperbaric mass? What is the connection with hyperbarics? How does it improve hyperbarics? How does it mimic hyperbarics? When I say hyperbarics, I mean hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So through our conversations, through our emails, we have basically created this episode and we decided to share it. We are going to be diving deep into the ingredients of the mask, how they serve skin health and anti-aging, and what we were thinking when we were incorporating one ingredient and not the other. So like our thought process in creating the mask. And what you will learn uh, from this episode is first of all, how does hyperbarics work? Why does it work? How does it work for skin rejuvenation? You're going to learn about the ingredients that we have in the product and how they work for skin rejuvenation. And you will also learn how, again, what is our thought process and how we decide on active ingredients that we incorporate in our product, in our formulas. Um, before we do that, uh, it would mean the world to me and to us at Young Goose and the Biohacking Beauty Podcast if you took two seconds out of your day to subscribe to the podcast. Not only does this ensure you will never miss an episode, but it would also greatly help the growth of this podcast, making sure that anyone that can enjoy the information being displayed here and being presented here will have the opportunity to do so. Before we dive into today's episode, first, I'd like to remind you that this is, again, it's this is by uh, Young Goose Skincare, the world's first biohacking skincare company. We are dedicated to having your cells and your skin function at an optimal youthful state. And through that youthful state, we also provide the best results skincare can provide today, but also making sure you look youthful and rejuvenated for years to come. So check out our products at younggoose.com. But without further ado, let's start our episode. So as we said before, uh, we are talking about the hyperbaric mask. And this mask basically started out of a necessity or out of our will to create a product that will improve hyperbaric oxygen therapy. One of the things that science shows us is that when a person is becoming older in age, one of the things that they are being limited as far as their overall rejuvenation and their skin rejuvenation, when we're talking about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or in short, hyperbarics, is that their mitochondria, the energy creating parts of the cells, cannot create as much energy in the form of ATP. Um, and if anyone wants to get more into that science, we have a whole episode with Dr. Joe DeTori about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So I really would recommend anyone that wants to go back and listen to that episode. So yeah, we wanted to increase and support oxygen utilization in the mitochondria since it, it lowers with age and it is one of the main aspect of overall, but mainly skin rejuvenation in relation to hyperbarics. Uh, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. In order to do that, we source the best option, the best product, the best active ingredient uh, is a patented active ingredient that's called Vitacell. Actually, Vitacell is a collection of a few active ingredients, but it's very interesting because it's made out of yeast. And this yeast, its uh, cellular structure, the way that it makes energy, is very similar to how our cells make energy. And through isolating that component, which allows it to make energy well, Vita cell has been created. So basically it allows the cell to create energy much, much better, which obviously supports hyperbaric oxygen therapy. But in general, a part of aging is our cells are unable to create as much energy. And not only that they're not able to create as much energy, also the energy that they are creating is becoming more costly as far as the oxidative stress that comes with it. It just costs more to make more energy. So by lowering the cost and increasing the energy production, we can also benefit skin that is not going through hyperbaric oxygen therapy and it increases its youthfulness, which is very important. So any other products like retinols, for example, or any other product that is supposed to create 
uh, results in the skin, the way that it does it is basically it's asking the skin to, to perform a specific function that, it, that involves skin rejuvenation, cellular turnover, which means cells duplicate themselves so they can, they can basically create more, etc. So by providing more energy to the cells, by lowering the cost of energy production, we boost rejuvenation regardless if the person is doing hyperbarics or not. So the first purpose of the mask was to increase bioenergetic metabolism, which is the name for what I just said. And the first iteration of the mask was just that. It was just Vitacell suspended in glycerin, and uh, we've we, we saw amazing results with that. Actually, we had an in-house internal study where we provided around 200 of our, our already existing customers the ability to purchase the hyperbaric mask at a, at a discounted rate, given the fact that they're going to basically give us their opinions, fill up a questionnaire at the end of the uh, 14 days and 28 day cycle where they applied it every evening over what they were, they already were using. And the results were incredible. And we felt like we're onto something here. None of those uh, 200 people had anything to do with hyperbarics. None of them were going through hyperbaric oxygen treatments at the moment. So we knew we're, we're onto something big. And through that factor of trying to improve hyperbarics even more as far as how, what they do for skin rejuvenation, but also creating a product that's going to benefit anyone else, basically. We uh, looked at how we can even improve the, uh, the mask even further. And the next thing we wanted to tackle was the hyperoxic hypoxic paradox. So again, we, we looked at ways to, to improve the mask. The hyperoxic hypoxic paradox um, is uh, something that's emerging in hyperbaric science and, and is looked at as the main reason hyperbaric oxygen therapy is beneficial. And what it means is, is that fluctuation of oxygen levels during and after hyperbaric session induces a hormetic stress response. So basically, it's not that uh, increasing the available oxygen to 100% and the um, pressure of atmospheres around us in the tank that provides the regenerative effect. It's actually the fluctuation between uh, 100% oxygen to 21%, which is what normal atmosphere has, and vice versa. That is creating a Basically, we're tricking the, the body, we're loading it with oxygen, and then we're tricking it to think that it's being deprived of oxygen. And that fluctuation back and forth is hormetic. It means it creates a positive stress response on two uh, significant uh, pathways. One is CERT1, is a CERT2 pathway, which we talk a lot about because if you remember from our episode about NAD and about resveratrol, sirtuins or our anti-aging genes, they are the subject of the book Lifespan by David, Sin David Sinclair, for example. And they are, again, the guardians of our genome or our longevity genes or anti-aging genes. So they are being activated. Sirtuin 1, which is one of the pathways there, is being activated by that hormetic response. And the other one is NRF2. NRF2 is very interesting because it's also becoming extremely popular to talk about NRF2. If anyone heard people taking broccoli extracts, broccoli sprouts, because they have sulforaphane, that's because it, it activates NRF2. Um, NRF2 increases glutathione. It increases heavy metal chelation, detoxification, and in general, it's considered a very potent anti-aging pathway to activate. So first talk about um, CERT1, it's activated by hyperoxia, but is actually deactivated due to hypoxia-induced factor 1A, which is HIF1A, which happens. So basically, when we have abundant oxygen, it's being activated, but it's being curbed through the, the, uh, the other part of um, the cycle, which the body is getting tricked to think it's getting deprived of oxygen. And what we did was we chose an amazing antioxidant that's called tiliroside. Tiliroside is found in abundance in strawberry seed oil. And by extracting strawberry seed oil and basically having, having tiliroside um, in high quantities in the mask, what it can do, it can actually downregulate HIF-1. 
and it is on its own an activator of uh, cert two and one of cert one. So we're kind of double whammying that cert one activation, which obviously increases the results of activating it. So that was the reason we chose that, for example, and not resveratrol, even though the patented resveratrol that we're using in care is amazing. It's 50 times more bioavailable than normal resveratrol. We ferment it, etc. Here, what we wanted to do is not only activate CERT1 on its own, but it was also to inhibit HIF1A. So HIF1A. Okay, so uh, the combination gave us amazing results, and that is a big part of why the mask will benefit the skin also long term, not only short term, because it makes sure through sirtuin activations that the genetic information that the skin relies on in order to function correctly is being preserved and maintained. So if you think of, uh, of a boat, Obviously, a boat can function very well. It can take us very far. Uh, but if it's not maintained continuously, that boat degrades. So the, the fact that it has the potential to take us all the way to the Bahamas kind of gets curbed when there are a few holes in the boat. The boat's going to sink like halfway through and it's not going to function very well. Same thing with our DNA. It's all the time being damaged. So the correct information, by the way, it's not only being damaged, also information is being altered. So parts of the DNA that are supposed to express themselves and show the right way for a cell to function is being turned off and vice versa. Wrong parts are being turned on and basically confuse the cell. The cell can't function correctly and makes mistakes. And again, what aging is, is the accumulation of unrepaired damage or unrepaired mistakes. Uh, so we're adding on to aging. By activating CERT1, we maintain and correct epigenetic information, allowing the skin to perform its functions optimally. And again, we're coming back to the fact we're porting optimal cellular function. Th this mask is not only going to improve your skin on its own, it really shines when we want to give the skin homework, either through professional treatments like lasers or peels or whatever we're doing in office in order to jumpstart uh, rejuvenation in the skin, or if we're using retinols or if we're using vitamin C, anything that you're using at home in order to uh, stimulate repair in your skin. The other part that I've been talking about is NRF2. Uh, this pathway is ex an extremely hot topic, and one of the things that are more that there are more publications on how they activate NRF is moringa. Uh, moringa is a plant that you can you can take as a supplement. I do. Um, it's very similar to to house house sulforaphane is being expressed in broccoli and broccoli sprouts and in a few other plants. Moringa has moringin, which is similar to sulforaphane, again, activating NRF2, amazing for detoxification, heavy metal chelation, and also um, amazing to increase uh, antioxidants in the skin. Again, we talked about, um, we talked about glutathione, uh, which is the innate um, antioxidant that the body uses. But that's how we tackle the hyperoxic, hypoxic paradox, how we looked to improve the ability of the mask to improve that aspect of hyperbarics, but also give someone who is not going through hyperbarics at the moment, such as myself, such as most people who use the mask and love it, and improved results from, from the mask itself and other products. What is remarkable as far as HBOT is concerned, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is concerned, and um, the mask as well, is how that increase in energy brings on uh, increase in collagen production. So because the mask's primary purpose was to enhance these skin-specific rejuvenation effect, effects of hyperbaric, and seeing that frequent hyperbaric sessions uh, stimulate collagen production, uh, we aimed at strengthening the stimulation with a biomimetic peptide. We were looking at all the peptides that are known in the market and peptides that are less known, basically, the peptides that are, that are new to the market. And a new set of peptides that you're going to see really erupt in, in, the, in the next few years are something we, we call pro-peptides. They're peptides that stimulates the uh, production or the, the expression of other peptides. And that is the peptides we, we, we looked at. That, that peptide that we chose in the end, that's called tetrapeptide 4. And the reason it's amazing, it's because it works on a genetic level. It activates 
genes that are responsible for collagen, elastin, and finronectin, uh, which is another uh, area in the extracellular matrix of the skin that is responsible for skin resistance, basically how how when we pinch the skin, how fast it kind of bounces back, and it increases the genetic expression of all of those. So we we get a stim- stimulus also regardless of uh, hyperbarics, but also something that piggybacks on the the ability of hyperbarics to increase collagen production. But here on a on a genetic level, on an epigenetic level, we're stimulating it as well. Um, we've also kind of we're looking to see what else we can do. The last thing we added was we wanted to add an anti-inflammatory element that would work both within the confines of improving H- HBOT, uh, hyperbaric therapy, but also uh, without it. Also, again, because a lot of what we were trying to think of incorporating this mask into is professional treatments. You go back home and now you want to increase whatever results to a treatment that you paid for. Um, so you can pay... Uh, for any any specific treatment like a peel, the same peel can cost in one place $100, in a different place $1,000. And the difference is the professional that's doing the treatment, what results they can get from that treatment. So with this mask, you'll be able to get better results, again, like like a person that paid $1,000, even though you didn't. So in order to boost the anti-inflammatory effects of HBOT and uh, without HBOT as well, we incorporated alginic acid, which is extracted from Hawaiian brown algae. And that has been something that's also becoming more popular in skincare. It's quite expensive, so not a lot of companies use it, but uh, it is hydrating, it's anti-inflammatory, and it works amazingly with all the other products that uh, or ingredients that we've incorporated into the mask. So yeah, that was basically the kind of ingredients behind the mask and why we chose them and how they can be used either together with other products or without. Uh, we designed the mask, the mask to be also dual purpose in the fact that you'll be able to use it for only 30 minutes if you want a quick, you know, pep, pep up uh, or a quick tightening of the skin. If you have an event or you want to look good for a specific photo shoot, whatever that is, but also as a treatment. So that treatment is an overnight treatment. The mask itself is gel like when you apply it to the skin. It's clear. You you won't stain your pillow. Nothing like that. It's you can think of it like a gel. So you apply it overnight. We recommend at least two weeks when you first get it. Better if you do it uh, for four weeks in the beginning, every night over your normal routine. We've done two studies on this mask. The first the first one I spoke about already. The second one was how do we get the best results from the mask um, in a clinical setting? We did biopsies, etc. And what we learned is that the mask works best. Again, boosting the effects of other products, not on its own. So it has a beautiful effect on its own, but it can even boost other uh, other products. So if you're using retinols, night cream, any serum, anything, do not skip that when you're using the mask. On the contrary, that's sh- that should be when you're using those things. So apply it at least for two weeks, if not four weeks. And after that, you could still apply it every night, or you can go down to maintenance, which is uh, twice a week or anywhere in between. These this product is we believe it's it's a revolutionary product not only us everyone who uses it thinks uh it's it's revolutionized their skin and uh we believe that you're going to hear about it not only that you're going to hear about it a lot we know a lot of companies are going to try and imitate that product in the near and not so uh near future uh, and we're very proud of it so uh, we recommend everyone to try it. Obviously, if uh, you're new to, to Young Goose and you would like to try our products, you can use code PODCAST20, all caps, for your first purchase to get 20% off and uh, enjoy. Again, my name is Amitai Eshel. I am the co-founder and CEO of Young Goose, the biohacking skincare company, and I wish you all a great rest of your day. Music.